his blindness allowed us to see. It allowed us to open our eyes and see the injustices that were done to African Americans in this country and still going on today in 2021. I am Laura Williams, the author of I Am Sergeant Isaac Woodard Jr., How My Story Changed America. Sergeant Isaac Woodard was my great uncle. His eldest sister was my grandmother. Laura Williams' great uncle Isaac was a civil rights pioneer who never intended to be one. Isaac Woodard was born on March 8th 1919 in Winsboro, South Carolina. At age 23, he enlisted in the United States Army and he served the country for three years and he actually won several awards. He received a battle star for unloading ships under enemy fire. He earned his star. His unit was strictly African-American. It was segregation the entire time. There was no desegregation yet. And on the day of his return back to the States, which was February 12th, 1946, he took a Greyhound bus heading back to Georgia, home to his new wife and family. And that trip changed his life forever. The bus made multiple stops along the way. One particular stop, Sergeant Woodard went to the driver to ask if it's okay to, for him to use the restroom. And of course, he's leaving from the back of the bus, right? Because of course, it's segregation. The bus driver just dismissed his request and spoke to him in a very disrespectful manner. He basically told Sergeant Woodard, go sit down, go back and sit down. And he had every right, you know, he says, listen, I, I just fought for this country. Speak to me as a man as I'm speaking to you. I think I deserve respect. And of course, he had his full uniform on. So there was no question of who he was or where he came from or what he represented. The driver at the time told him, sure, go ahead, use the restroom. He didn't say anything further to him until they reached the following bus stop. And when they reached that second bus stop in Batesburg, South Carolina, the driver got off the bus, summoned two police officers who were nearby and brought them back on the bus and told him that Isaac was drunk and disorderly which was not the case. Yet, they believed him, they escorted him off the bus, and shortly after that, they began to beat him. And they beat him so severely that they blinded him. The nightsticks at that time, they had sort of like nails protruding from them. They used the end of those nightsticks and hit him in his eyes. Of course, it lacerated his corneas, and he was permanently blinded. After that happened, he was taken to the county jail. Of course, the bus went on its way. He was just thrown in a cell and left unattended, no medical treatment, bleeding in pain and anguish, alone, I'm sure traumatized, and uh, left there overnight. The next day, Isaac Woodard was brought to a courthouse and charged with disorderly conduct. He was fined all the money he had on him. And then basically said, you're free to go. Now here he is, he's 27 years old, just returned home, beaten, blinded. He has no idea of where he is or where to go. So he's free to go where? Where is he going to go? There's no place to go. He just asked to be taken back to the jail, to the cell where he had spent overnight, just to at least gather his thoughts, I guess, but he was beginning to feel physically ill. Over time, they realized that he was getting so ill that he had to be taken to the hospital. He was driven to the Veterans Hospital where he spent the next two months. He did get treatment there. They tended to his wounds, he had x-rays, they were able to determine the extent of his injuries. And I believe one of the physicians said it was just so severe, it was hopeless. There was nothing they could do. Woodard avoided serious injury while serving in World War II, only to be blinded for life back home. To make matters worse, he was denied his veteran benefits. After two months in the hospital, Isaac's two older sisters brought him to New York City. And then things started to happen. 
news spread quickly around the country. And the NAACP came to his aid. They rallied around him and they knew that he wasn't able to receive veterans benefits. So they decided to hold a benefit concert for him to raise funds to help support him. Nat King Cole, Billie Holiday, Pearl Bailey, Count Basie, who was a very notable jazz pianist, and boxer Joe Lewis. They agreed to be a part of this benefit, and they sold tickets, and the tickets sold out in one day. And from then on, he decided that he knew that he needed to spread the word and let people hear his story. So he began to tour the country. He went from place to place and explained to them about the inequities of African Americans and, and police brutality. And this was back in 1946. He just wanted to let people know that, you know, this isn't right. And, you know, basically look what happened to me. And even President Truman heard of his story. And from that, he formed a Council on Civil Rights. As a first step, I appointed an advisory committee on civil rights last December. I am confident that the product of their work will be a sensible and vigorous program for action by all of us. That was the first ever in this country. That's when it started. President Truman then decided to desegregate the armed forces. So because of Isaac's story, the uh, armed forces were desegregated. It seems Isaac made an impression on everyone who heard his story. I remember my dad telling me about how much mail he would receive from people around the world. One letter in particular my dad mentioned of a young girl in Germany who had heard about Uncle Isaac's story. She wanted to help. And what she did was she sent Isaac a letter telling him that she wanted to help him and she included her $8 savings. And of course, Isaac was loved at home as well. I just have very fond memories of him. Uncle Isaac was a good cook, even after he became blind. He was a wonderful man. He was a, a very loving relative, and he ended up taking things in stride. He didn't become bitter over the long haul. He dealt with it, and he made the best out of his life. I wanted to write the book to pay homage and honor to my Uncle Isaac and um, the legacy. So we have to teach the children from what happened then and how we can change things now and live in a better world. This is Inside Edition Digital.